Welcome to Evolution of Self with me, Britannia. Hello, and welcome to Evolution of Self. I'm Britannia, and I am going to be talking about fear today. And I've chosen this topic because as I look around the world, there is so much fear. And the thing that I'm most passionate about is helping people to step from living in an automated, survival-based mode to living a more conscious and self-aware life. And fear to me is the very thing that pulls us back into living an automated life. Because as soon as we're triggered by fear, then we create loops that constantly draw us back into automated behavior. When something happens to you and it causes fear inside of you, it triggers a reaction. And if you aren't aware enough to choose something else, you simply act from this reactive state. And this reactive state is not your conscious higher self. It is your automated survival instincts. And I just want to give you an example. At the beginning of the whole coronavirus pandemic, when everybody was, this is in the UK especially, this is, since this is where I am, <laughs> um, I went shopping and this was at the stage where everyone was panic buying. And I hadn't really thought about it before I went. And as I entered the shop, I could feel this sort of wave of fear um, engulf me. Um, I'm quite empathetic, so I tend to pick up what other people are feeling around me. And because I wasn't kind of prepared for it and I wasn't as present as maybe I'd like to think I am <laughs> all the time, um, I could feel myself reacting to the fear. Um, I could feel myself feeling that I needed to make sure that I was safe and that I had enough food to survive. Um, luckily, through all the stuff that I do, I sort of, being in that state is now very uncomfortable for me. Um, so I was able to bring myself back into a much more conscious state and only buy the things that I actually needed rather than panic buying. But it made me very aware of how, if we're not aware of it, we plug into fear. We plug into it through what we watch. We plug into it through the people we surround ourselves with. We plug into it unconsciously by going shopping when people around us are fearful. And I wanted to share with you, first of all, just some insights to know when you're feeling fearful. And secondly, some tools to help you step out of that fear so that you can make choices um, that support you in living a conscious, more self-aware life. So the first thing is, when, you're when fear is triggered within you, it can be experienced in many different ways. It can be experienced in a rebelliousness. I'm sure that a lot of the people that are breaking the, the rules around the lockdown um, and a meeting up with friends. I would assume that a lot of that comes from fear, if they really looked at it. Fear that they're missing out, fear that their friends won't like them or forget about them, won't care about them if they don't see them. Uh, fear that they will get forgotten and, you know, people won't remember them. Then there's the very obvious fear when I went shopping of people not feeling like they're going to be able to survive if they don't stock up and make sure that they have supplies to last them a really long time. Anger can also be an outward sort of outward projection of fear. In fact, anger I think is, is prim primarily comes from fear, um, although most people might deny that when they're in their angry state. But anger to me is a response and every client I've ever worked with when I bring them back and we look at the pain that caused the anger and that pain generally comes from fear. So, how to know if you are in a fear state? One, if you are not acting in a way you'd like to act. If you're feeling a negative emotion, if you're feeling angry, um, hurt, sad, alone, jealous, greedy, all of these things come from fear. They're the reactions that your fear produces to try and keep you safe. Um, and fear is a very natural thing. Um, when you look at the automated way that we work, um, fear tries to create a reaction that ensures your survival. And it's quite good at it. But it is an illusion of what your sh real truth is. Because whenever you are in fear, you're forgetting that you aren't just a human being, but you are a soul inside a human body. You are spirit, divine, inside a human body and you are eternal. 
And any time you feel fear, you're forgetting that truth, the very truth of your actual nature. And by forgetting that, you fall into your automated survival-based living. And that is not living in alignment with your truth. Um, just a little bit of science -y stuff here for those that like science. So the way fear works is when, when you're triggered, when something makes you fearful, you actually physiologically stop being able to use your higher thinking and your brain activity goes into your <laughs> little bug, goes into your um, reptilian part of your brain where it is fight, flight or freeze. And if you start sort of noticing when you feel a negative emotion, you might want to question which of those three things you go into. Do you go into fight and anger and aggression? Do you go into freeze and just completely lock down? Or do you go into flight and retreat and shut yourself away? Um, and it's just interesting to notice that because also when you start realizing that, what your reaction is, then you'll start to be able to catch yourself more quickly and put the steps that I'm about to share with you in place. So these are the steps that you can use to help you step out of fear. So the very first step is to pause as soon as you realize you've been triggered because that pause gives you space. Without the space, the trigger happens and the reaction happens and it's almost instant. But if you're able to pause, you give yourself space to realize what you're doing, space to make a different choice, space to bring yourself down out of fear and into more into the present moment and more in alignment with your truth so that your actions can be towards your best self, your higher self, towards creating a more conscious self-aware life. So that first step is to pause. The next step is to know who you want to be, who you want to be in this world, who you want to be in every moment. And when you know that, then once you've paused, you can ask yourself, who do I want to be in this moment? And if you already have an idea of what kind of person you want to be, then the actions you choose should be in alignment with that. If you don't, I suggest you make some time. <laughs> to decide what kind of person you really want to be so that when things like that happen you can choose how you would want to act from that person that you choose to be. The other thing that you can do when you feel you've been triggered by fear is to try and get yourself out of your head because as soon as we're triggered and we go into our automated responses we access all of our subconscious old pattern thinking. Now to get yourself out of this state it's about taking your focus very much into the present moment. Focus on your breathing, do some deep breathing exercises by breathing deep down into your tummy. Become very, very present with where you are. Um, for instance, I'm sitting out in the garden, so I could be listening to the birds. I could take my focus onto a single blade of grass and just be there in the moment with that piece of grass. Because about 95%, if not more, of our thinking comes from our automated survival mechanisms, our subconscious mind and our programs and our historical data that we fed ourselves. If you want to choose actions that come from a higher altered state, then you need to step out of all of that noise and learn to be very present so that your inspiration and your inspired action comes from an alignment with source. And to do that, you need to be very present in the moment. Something else that I do to become very present is I go for a walk um, or a run or I do something on my own. Something where my body can be busy and I can try and become very aware of the space around me rather than the noise in my head. Uh, some people meditate, you can do yoga. There are many different things you can do to become more present. Um, and it's in that present state when you're out of the noise in your head that you can get inspiration. And that inspiration is what comes from consciousness the greater consciousness, God, source, whatever it is you want to call it. Um, and when your actions come from there, then they will always be for your greatest good and for your greatest expansion and for your best self. Um, these are just some little simple tools um, to help you in the moment right here and now. And I hope it's created a greater understanding. Thanks so very much for listening, and if you enjoyed this, I've got a free five-day course which you can subscribe to with a few more tools and techniques in it. And I also have loads of resources on my website, www.britannia.com, B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y-A.com. And I'll put links to both of those in the notes below. And the free course is called Five Steps Towards Self-Awareness. Lots of love from me to you.